This is for my 18-year-old daughter. Aww. Hi, Hi. Her name is Tatiana. Hi, Tatiana. Hi, Tatiana. Hi, Tatiana. <laughs>I'm Steve Mowbray. Thank you all for coming. I'm here with Agile World and I am here with some amazing wicked women <laughs> who are changing the world. And I love the fact that you're changing the world. You guys just did a talk at Agile 2022 and I had chills. Thank you, Lisa. I cried. Yes, I'm talking to you and you and Sally. <laughs> and I'm highly motivated. And, and Joanne, you didn't drop an F-bomb. I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, typically I like to, didn't it? No. So look, real quick, real quick, I know you guys only have to, only have 20 minutes, and I'm so honored to be here with you. So tell me, straight up, what ignited your passion? You are not politicians. You are not royalty. You are not billionaires. Mm. What gives you the right to change the world based on your passion? Why are you doing it? I, I, I'll have to sit there. I'll, I'll try to be brief if I can. So uh, during the pandemic, the early times in 2020, um, uh, it was just awful, right? Everything that was happening in that situation, I felt so depressed, so sad um, that the world was in the state that it was in. Um, and then what started to happen, because I went into this kind of dark place, I was very much trying to figure out, I was losing hope. Like there's something about, you know, humanity wasn't helping each other. It was just really quite sad. Mm -hmm. So I had a great coach. Um, we kind of helped process the whole thing. And um, what really came very clear was, yes, there was hope. And the hope was me. So I knew at that particular point in time that if I, if me, could make a difference, and, if we had, and I knew I wasn't the only one that was out there, that there was more people that could make a difference, then this was my chance. With whatever I had, whatever skills that I have, the capability I have, this is what I'm gonna do, so. Your Toronto mentorship. Mm -hmm. How many people have you helped virtually around the world? I've met people from many continents there. Yeah, so over 500 people have been part of the mentorship program, yeah, and um, so many people I know, we talked about it, have been impacted by it as, as well. And, and I have a hard time with that, believing that, but it is, it's been a pure joy for me to even start doing that. I mean, I think that's one of the indications. This, that's me. I just kind of like see a gap, need to close a gap, see the opportunity, see that there's something that needs to be done. I don't want to complain about it. Let's just do it. So it was just wonderful. Yeah, thank you. And damn if you didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> So Joanne Stone, you are one of the most amazing human beings, and I am so honored to know you. Oh, thank you. So Lisa, Lisa, you started the whole concept of Agile coaching. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20, there was no Agile coaches. None. Everybody who's become an Agile coach has changed and created a new, a new role because of well, you. You wrote the book. And you motivate people so well. How many people have you motivated? Um, you know, I've, I think about the ripple effect of the people that I've directly worked with and then the teams they work with and, and then on and on and on. Um, conservative estimates are that I have impacted hundreds of thousands of people. That is shocking to me. Um, Agile Coaching Institute trained and developed about 10,000 people in the time that you include it, yeah, in the time that Michael Spade and I were um, co-founders of it. And, um, and the Coaching Agile Team's book continues to do its work, which is so amazing to me. This is a, now a 12-year-old book that I just recorded the audio book for in 2020. Um, and now I've just recorded a series of guided study and practice groups through the book because so many people in so many geographies around the world can now benefit, especially geographies where they don't have the economic um, power to go to a, like a full-on Agile coaching class. So I'm really happy to be launching that now. So that 
you know, this back to the question of like, who are you to do this? I mean, that that's a question that that just haunted me throughout this whole time. And but especially writing the book and back to what Joanne said, I had this amazing coach when I was writing the Coaching Agile Teams book. And she's like, maybe you're not the best person to do it. Who cares? You're the one that got picked. For whatever reason, it's you. So like, get in there and do it, basically. And so she helped me continue to keep my eye on the vision of what I was going for. And I am I am very much motivated by people's pain, honestly. I'm motivated by the pain I see of people creating products that don't matter, of people subject to horrible conversation and interpersonal interactions, and just like the the la the loss of potential. You know, there's so much potential that we're not using, right? And so that. That is what helps me continue to go. And, um, and I actually believe that everyone has a ripple like that. Every one of us can say, what's been the ripple effect of what I've done? It's not just the people we've immediately impacted. It just goes out and out and out. And you help people create that ripple effect. You have always helped bring out the best in everyone. Mm. And damn it, you're making me cry now. You, mm -hmm. you, that's the first time you've done that to me. <laughs> you're always so good at motivating me. Thanks. Hi there. Hi. Now, this is the first time you, you and I have met. Yep. And I just heard a wonderful, passionate story about how you want to change the world. Yeah, you did. I'm an ordinary, ordinary software engineer. That's why we never met yes, before. Yes, you're just a software developer. Why are you changing the world? How can, how can you have that passion to do so? Well, it comes from a sadness and also because I'm an optimistic person. Let me explain this. Uh, so the sadness is about everything that's disappearing that I took for granted when I was a kid, like being in nature. I'm from Sweden and, well, the Swedish nature is beautiful and I spent a lot of time in it. And I know that a lot of those environments are going to change. They're going to disappear. They're not going to be there anymore because of climate change. And a lot of things, all other things that I value are also not going to be there anymore. That's a fact. That's not the risk. That's a fact these days. On the other hand, the only constant in the world is change. So what we can do is to help this change go in a better way than it's currently going, which is no catastrophes, no wars, no nothing. Instead, building something else, which is not what I grew up with, but something else. So that's my sadness, and my hope is that we can build this. And the only way that I can sustain hope is by acting. If I don't do anything, I fall into despair. So that's it. I'm not the right person or anything. I'm just one person. Everybody is the right person. But you're one person and now everybody wants to follow you. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> this is absolutely amazing what, what, what you're doing. Thank you. So think about how many, how many people are going to be helped and how many people you've already helped through all of this. Hopefully, yes. Thank you. You are a, a soft-spoken person, but you are a strong-ass leader. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I Thank absolutely you. Love, love you and what, what you're doing. Thank you so much. <laughs> We're going to quickly jump to a conversation with Yuta Eckstein, as she could not stay for the conference, but we did catch up with her after the show. And um, then we will come back to speak with Anu and Sally. Thank you. So... Utah at Agile 2022, you you had to run and you weren't able to, to stick around for the, the quick chat and interview with these other five amazing women. And luckily, um, so gracious of you to find time to, to spend a few minutes with me today to help answer the question so we can pull it all together. And as I asked the other women and, and you in particular, I am just shocked at what all of you have created and how you have become such amazing leaders. Now you have written books on architecture and software development in the Agile world and, and the Agile Manifesto was signed by a bunch of men. 
to white men and no women involved with that signature. So since then, you have written these books. You have been a leader in software and engineering. And I also met people at lunch that were telling me what a wonderful coach you were and how you just helped them become a better human and better person. So you are great with technology. You are great with humans and emotions and people. And now you're changing the world for climate change. What sparked your passion? What ignited you to make this change? Well, actually for me, this is on my private agenda for a long, long, long time. So it started in the eighties and it, it is just with me. However, I never really knew how I can combine that with my professional life. And this only started to, to get together in 2018, actually. And so at that time, I was then also working together with Claudia Melo, who is also actually a great leader. At the time, she was working for the United Nations. Now she's back in Brazil. That's where she's coming from. And um, we together explored sustainability and agile. And sustainability is really defined by three pillars. So it has a social aspect where we look at um, kind of how can we bring equity, health and livability to people, then the environmental aspect, which is a typical thing we talk about when we think of climate change, and then so protecting the planet, and then it has as a third pillar, the economic pillar, which is about improving lives and prospects of everyone everywhere. And if you think about my wonderful, wonderful peers on the panel, you could also see that, for example, Sally is focusing on the social aspect by ensuring democratic rights in Sudan and working with the people there, versus Pia is looking at the environmental aspect with the carbon offset and helping companies to get there. And then we have Anu, who looks at the economic aspect by helping those girls in Africa to improve their lives and prospects. So this is kind of how, how things are really getting together. And, and now what, what we realized when we looked at this was, well, on the one hand, often we think software comes to the rescue. Well, in Azure, we often create software, but that's not true so much. So sometimes the software we are creating isn't really inclusive, is not usable by everyone, or um, software comes with a carbon footprint as well, not to mention like, well, often the software is the reason why we create electronic waste and buy a new laptop or whatever. And also economic wise, not always the software that we are creating is really for the greater good but every so often we don't think about that. And so my, my thing is really that on the one hand, I want to raise the awareness that we have all those tools at hand and, and then on an end, we do damage with it, but we could also do good with it. And so this is the awareness that I want to raise. And then especially really in the agile field, I think we can do so much more. So we have all those skills, well, also guided by the values and principles and, and the practices we have at hand, where we, how we can make a difference really. And we should do that way more. Oh, that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful thought. And, you know, it, it, it isn't just about the software as, as your, your presentation stated, it is about so much more and we can make the world a better place. And thank you for, for really motivating so many people. Um, I know there were 1500 people at the conference that were motivated, but I'm looking at LinkedIn and, and this may be the spark that ignites us all. So thank you so much for being who you are and I love who you are and what you do. Thank you. Well, and maybe, maybe I want to add that you have been asking the other ones, what gives me the right to do that? And I really think it's not a right, it's a responsibility. And I think we all have that. And so we have that, like every human being has it, but maybe even more so for us in the agile field, because 
we know all that stuff, you know, and so we can do better. And um, yeah, that's what we should do. That's wonderful. Thank you. Um, Yuta, you, you make me want to become a better person. And, and I thank you so much for all your motivation and inspiration. You're a wonderful human being. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And now we're back to hear from Sally and Anu from Agile 2022. <sighs> Sally. Hello. Look, everybody knows you from, from, you know, the health <laughs> radar, the agility health radar, and you're doing Videos. fabulous. You have this wonderful com company. You can just hang out. You don't need to change the world. You're doing great. But, but when, when, when we, we met virtually online, thank you, Lisa, for the, for the introduction, you started telling your story about Sudan and the passion and the caring that you have for other human beings mm -hmm. and how you're changing the world. And you, you made me cry for the second time I heard that story. So what ignited your passion and what's your story to, to share with others? You know, um, it starts with heart. Uh, and I've always said that I lead with love. And I really mean that. It's not just words that I say. I have a very big heart for people. I love people genuinely. Uh, so when you start to see people from your home country suffering, struggling, very similar to Anna's story, you see their faces, but you see their strength, you see their courage, you see their stamina, you see the woman, I mean, they're all so skinny because I don't I think they have malnutrition, you know. Oh but you see them come out there, you see them chant, you see them sing, you see the strength of the women, they're like lioness over there. I mean, and you're like, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna sit here in my little comfy job, in my comfy house, and, um, and do nothing? Or am I gonna step into it? And you, you start to doubt yourself because you're not sure exactly what you're gonna do. I still can't tell you what we're gonna do next year or where this is going because it's uncertainty when you're dealing with wicked problems, it's very uncertain what's going to happen next. It's uncertain if you're going to see any results. Um, but you have to have the passion to do something to make a difference. So I am motivated by two things. I'm motivated by their faces and, and knowing that from a far away they know that I'm trying to do whatever I can to help them. And so they know that people are trying to help. And I'm also motivated by the team that I've created because you can't change the world one person. There's always a team involved. And I have formed such an amazing team around me that they motivate me every day. Some of them are even stronger than me. And, um, and it's for them that I continue to do what I do. So as long as they're gonna come out to the streets and, and you know lead this revolution, and as long as my team is motivated, then I'm gonna continue to lead and do whatever it takes. So are you beating up your team, telling them what they have to do? No, no. I'm a, I'm a true servant leader. They tell me what to do. We, we honestly, like when you get into this kind of work, where everybody's an equal, really. We're just all motivating each other. We're all brainstorming. Um, they're amazing. Noha, May, you know, Bakri Ali. There's so many people that have dedicated their life to helping others. And when you surround yourself with those people, you get motivated to take action. Yeah, so it's amazing. And you are one of those people. And I try to be. <laughs> and the reason, the reason I wanted to hang out with you guys is because you guys motivate me so much. You motivate everyone. <laughs> I love that about you. Anu. Hello. Now, Anu, you and I met virtually. I think the first time we were ever online, I, was, I, I may have been in my bathrobe. <laughs> because because we were, we, Scott Sieverit was, was launching um, um, Access Agile and to, to celebrate agility, 20 years of agility mm -hmm. around the world. And you just started to run with this thing. You became a massive leader. I had no idea who you were. And you just stepped up. And the first time I heard you speak, you moved me. What is it? Now, you come from a very challenging area. Mm. And you mentioned that the first time you were looking for a job, you were told that you would have to sleep with someone to get it. Four of them. Four Not of just them. one. <laughs> <laughs> And you didn't. No. And you changed the lives of how many people? 6,000 plus. 6,000 plus? Yeah. Girls, age 18 to 25. 18 to 25. You gave them hope? You gave them knowledge? How? How did that passion ignite in you? <sighs> I grew up in Nigeria, and I see poverty every day. 
every day I step out of my house on the streets, I see government and private organizations and family mm -hmm. abusing women. Even their own niece, daughters, just, just name it. And that wasn't cool for me. Every day I step out, I cry because I'm privileged. But there are so many women out there that doesn't have, you know, the little wealth that my parents has, the opportunity that I have. And that really broke my heart. And like I said during the speech, I did my first degree in Nigeria and I didn't see computer <laughs> for years studying computer science. You know, and with the experience that I've had in getting a job, I just, that inspired me walking out of that interview that, you know what, I'm not going to allow other girls to walk my path. I need to be the change that they are looking for. And I said, one day I'm going to create a platform that will provide education, mentorship, and job opportunities, eliminating those men. I was about to call them some bad names. Mm -hmm. You know, eliminating them out of the space and connect these girls directly to opportunities that they deserve. And it happened in 2020 because I've done a lot for the African community in diaspora, tens of thousands of them all over the world. And I just felt that it's time for me to focus on my continent, Africa, and do something for them. And that was what inspired me to start Africa Agility Foundation. And I see hunger and thirst on the faces of, this, of these girls. The first one we did, October, November 2020, there was a peaceful demonstration happening in Nigeria because the police were killing our youth and raping our girls. These are the people that are supposed to be protecting the girls, the youth. Millions of youth were out there protesting. And my girls were walking to the training center between five to 10 hours, because there was no public transportation every day, getting no middle of the night, and 5 a.m. the next morning, they're on the road for day two of their boot camp. Even when the military people came out and they shot the youth, they killed a lot of them. These girls persevere, and they said, we are going to complete this training to the end. Although we moved online because it became really, really serious. Within 24 hours, they all got laptops at their homes. We jump on Zoom and the training and the program continues. Wait. <coughs> Excuse me. People were killed. People were killed. Oh, the so president called military people to shoot the youth. And that still didn't stop you? Oh, it didn't stop. Oh, it hasn't stopped. And, and you, you continue to, to lead people and help them create a better life. Yeah. That is just, I don't even know what to say. That is just so good. How did you find the strength? Why didn't you stop? <laughs> I just couldn't stop because I want to change the narratives. <laughs> I can't stop because if I stop, who is going to step up to help them? The government is not doing anything. Private organizations are not doing anything. Let me shock you. Um, this year, I spoke to two MDs of companies to sponsor our initiatives. They are still asking me to sleep with them. Are they crazy? <sighs> Who do they think they are? Wow. Up till now. Oh, up till now. I was in Nigeria in June, and I met with some leaders, and they were still telling nonsense. Then I just made, I made up my mind that I'm not going to seek for financial sponsorship in Africa again. I'm going to come to my community. Any amount, I don't know rich people, but I'm going to make as much noise as possible. I'm not speaking to any African company again. 
to secure funding. It's disgusting. Sorry that you had to experience that. Wow. So if I'm from US and I'm experiencing that, what do you think the girls are experiencing every day? They pick them on the streets because they have to put food on the table for their family. They sleep with them and they don't stay pay them. And they go home empty handed. Oh, you need to hear these girls' stories. want to know from you listening to all of us what did you get out of it what do I get out of it yeah as an audience member hearing that oh as an, well one um that's a, that's a great question thank you for turning the tables on me <laughs> <laughs> which is which is what, what which is what what you do um I all right I I'm I'm a middle-aged white man I have a I, I'm fully aware that I have certain privileges. Um, I, grew, I grew up in a home that, that's 980 square feet. It's five of us. That's small by U.S. standards. I have ADHD. I I failed a grade in, in elementary school. I couldn't read, and so I've I've struggled. I was just that I was just that kid that couldn't. I'm I'm a GED kid. I didn't I didn't graduate high school. Yeah, I'm telling my daughter. That. Who just graduated high school and, and my son. Um, but someone believed in me, mm. and they gave me the opportunity to, um, uh, to 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 work at a software company, and because I looked good in a suit, I was thin, I was a good-looking kid, grew a beard, so I looked a little older, and I had that privilege to prove myself. If I was a woman, I may not have had that opportunity. If I was a woman. With your skin color, hmm. ain't no chance in hell. They would have given me that opportunity, and it wasn't much opportunity. And I didn't come from a background like, like you do, by any means. But it was lower. It was lower middle class, for sure. And I had no education, and I'm sitting there with corporate 500. Uh, I, 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 I company, yeah. <clears throat> you guys, you guys got me shook up, and. And through that, people were listening to me because I was a white guy, I had a beard, and I looked good in a suit. And that's the bottom line. That was the only reason they gave me a chance to, to, to listen to me. Otherwise, I would not, not. And I'm aware of that. And my daughter, my daughter has ADHD. She has some of my, my challenges. And, and I don't want her to go through what you did. I don't want that. I don't want her to have... God damn it. <laughs> I want her to have the opportunities that everybody else does. Mm. And I want that for everyone. So that's what I got out of it. Beautiful. I need to be a better leader. That's what I want. I want to be a better leader for my kids, for my family, for the world. It's beautiful. And that's what you guys do for me. You helped give me the education, Lisa. Thank you so much for that. You're welcome. You know, we talked about that we hope these sparks of conversation fly from this room to all areas, to all geographies, all conferences, all meetups, all conversations. You're one of those sparks. Mm. Mm. And thank you for putting the pressure on me. <laughs> <laughs> and tell your daughter we love her and we know she's going to have a beautiful future. Absolutely. She has a great dad. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I have, I have an amazing daughter. And you know what? If I can do half of what you guys have, yeah. mm. then I'll make the world a better place, too. Thank so, you. Um, thank you, Joanne. You have motivated me through your sense of humor and your mentorship. Mm. And you have made me realize that I need to mentor more, mm. or I should be mentoring more. Because you're doing it, I can too. Lisa, you started everything. You have motivated me to help change the world. Mm -hmm. Climate change is a serious frickin' issue. I want to get my daughter involved with this. I think it might create some passion. Sally, the first time I heard your story, that I saw you there with your, your, the video that you have. It moved me. The first time I heard your story, it made me cry. And I thought of you as just, as just you know, the Agile Health Radio. And you're so much more, and you're doing so much more for the world. And Anu, 
I wish no one on the planet had to go through what you did. And I think everybody should make should work to make a better world for you. And I want to help. I want to help all your causes. I want to help each and every one of you. Well, you know what to do. You go to Agility Impact, that website, that triplatform.com. And your so whoever's uh, mm -hmm. watching this, make sure you give them access to the um, to that platform because you can support all these causes or you can add a new cause as well. Okay, say it again one more time. What was the name of it? Speak up. It is agilityimpact.tribeplatform.com and you'll probably add a URL or a link um, to it. So yeah, that's how everybody can get started. There you go. And anyone who is interested in it's getting in touch with each and every one? It's on your back. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, you can edit and anyone who, who wants uh, to, to talk to any, any of you or, or get involved, uh, all of the information will be in the show notes for Agile World News. Um, and we'll all be there. And I am just grateful to be in the presence of each and every one of you. And thank you so much for your time. I know you have to go. Yes. <laughs> um, I know we have people have to run off to the airport, but thank you so much. I love you, you all. Thank you. Thanks for what you do. Appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity.